Welcome to the ultimate Rohan guide for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. In this video, we will cover the build order, the PowerPoint choices, and the different strategies you can use while playing with the Rittermark faction. Before further ado, let's get it started. Rohan is an extremely powerful faction which is easy to learn but incredibly hard to master. The gap between a good Rohan player and a great Rohan player is incredibly big unlike in all other factions of BFME 1. With plenty of different strategies, Rohan can not only win consistently versus other factions but also can be the most fun faction to play with. Let's talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of the Rohan faction. Rohan is the best early game faction. The peasant spam, when used correctly, can be extremely powerful to take over the map versus any other faction, which also means that Rohan gets stronger the bigger the map is. Peasants are not only very cost efficient, but also one of the best and cheapest counter units to the enemy pikemen. With the cheap stable and the cheap cavalry units, the Rohirrim, Rohan is also a very good mid game faction. Some might think that Rohan would fall off in the late game but that's simply not true. When built correctly Rohan's late game can be extremely powerful. With cheap but very effective heroes like Theodin and Elma, and the leadership they can provide to the nearby Rohirrim and Rohirrim archers, Rohan's army is not only very strong but also mobile at the same time. The weakness of Rohan is the lack of resources. With only 7 spots inside the castle, Rohan has 1 less than the evil factions like Isengard and Mordor and 2 less than Gondor, which means that Rohan is depending more on the map control than any other faction of the game. The other weakness of the Rohan faction is the lack of powerful siege weapons. While Isengard can recruit ballistic stars and explosive mine, Mordor the catapults from the siege works and Gondor the trebuchet from the workshop, all Rohan can do to siege is to recruit ants, which are not weak by all means, but to be able to recruit ants, player has to invest 5000 resources for the ant mood and ants are very vulnerable versus fire, which makes them quite squishy versus other siege weapons like trebuchet and catapults. As we cover the strength and the weaknesses of the Rohan faction, let's also take a look into the rating of on a scala from 1 to 10. Early game Rohan is a 8, as peasant spam is not very powerful on small maps but can still be very effective. Mid game Rohan is a 9, with the cheap stable and cheap cavalry units, you should be able to take over the map versus any other faction. Late game is very situational and can change between 3 and 9. In order to be effective in the late game, you need to invest the time into it in the mid game, which means you need to try to recruit your heroes like Elma and Theodin and actively put in the time to level them up. While Rohan can be the strongest faction with highly leveled Rohirrim and Rohirrim archers with Elma leadership and the glorious charge from Theodin, it is the weakest faction without. <laughs> As the strategies and the build order can change depending on the map we are playing on and the faction we are playing against, we will again assume that we are on the map Force of Eisen and that our opponent has picked random. We will start the game by recruiting Mary and building up two farms. As Rohan is an extremely aggressive faction versus any other faction without exception, we will send our starting peasants forward to pressure our enemies' settlements. Here we have two options. Option number one, we recruit additional peasants from the farms we build inside the castle and send Mary with our starting two peasants to have a strong push power, but this will also delay our stable a bit. Option number two, we are not recruiting any peasant and using our hobbit to grab our two settlements. This will mean that we won't be able to deal any economical damage to our opponent, but we will have a very early stable. Mastering both the options is highly recommended, as both can be situationally very good, and switching between these two options will make your playstyle way less predictable. Let's assume we are going with the option number one. We are sending our two starting peasants and our hobbit Mary to the enemy settlement, and we figure out that it's Mordor we are playing against. Peasants are stronger than orcs and also our hobbit can be very deadly as he is able to two shot the enemy orcs. So we take the fight and kill the orcs first before focusing the lumber mill. When you know that you can win the fight, it is always better to kill the enemy units first before committing to the lumber mill. This way we can deal a much greater damage and even capture the enemy settlement after destroying it. When we realize that we can't win the fight, we can use our hobbit and our peasants to destroy the lumber mill instead. While this was happening, we got two additional peasants we recruited from the farms in inside our castle. We will send one of them through the middle to pressure our opponent and use the second one to capture our own settlements. We can also recruit peasants from the farms outside which I would not really recommend on a small map like Forts of Eisen as it is most of the time better to build up the stable a bit faster. Now we do own 4 farms, 2 of them inside and 2 of them outside of our castle. Rohan has only 1 resource building unlike all the other factions and luckily this resource building will give us the food bonus we need, making our Rohirrim cheaper. Now we will have to save up for 650 resources to build up 
this table and recruit a Rohirrim. With our first Rohirrim versus evil factions, we will always destroy the Lambir mills first. Versus good factions, however, we will creep offensively. Offensive creeping means that we destroy the layer which is closer to the enemy castle first. Like I said, Rohan is a very aggressive faction and we need to play like that to get the best out of this faction. After the first Rohirrim, we will recruit the second Rohirrim and then fill up the castle with farms in one well. The second Rohirrim can be used for creeping. We are aiming to get at least four war players on the map Force of Eisen. That's why we need to recruit one more Rohirrim after filling up our base. When we play versus Gondor, we want to have one more Rohirrim than our opponent has knights. As Gondor will get upgrades usually faster than us, the extra Rohirrim will help us to keep the map control. Also, our stable will level up to level 2 after recruiting the Rohirrim number 4, which will give us the chance to rush the Horseman Shield, which does not only give us extra resistances versus arrows, but also versus enemy cavalry. When we play versus Isengard, we want to recruit peasants from each farm we build up outside to counter the Isengard pikemen and build the armory after recruiting 3 Rohirrim. From the armory, you want to buy the heavy armor first. It is very effective and also cheaper to upgrade your units. However, I would recommend to buy all the upgrades first before starting to upgrade your units, as we would like to demolish the armory as soon as possible to replace it with a farm. Like mentioned before, we do only have 7 spots and we want to use them wisely. The power point choices can look like this. Versus Isengard. Start with Draft, skip the heal power point and try to collect 3 power points to unlock the Elven Alliance special summon. Once you have this summon unlocked, recruit Theorin and go for the Beast Rush. Keep your Theorin next to your Elven summon to give them additional DPS so you can kill the pikes faster while your Rohirrim destroy the buildings. Like in every situation, map control is everything. While we rush the enemy castle with our Rohirrim, we should use our peasants to clean the map from the enemy pikes. Versus Gondor or Rohan, start as always with draft and go for the heal after. In this matchup, you might need to unlock the Elven Wood if your opponent spams his own land all over the map. If he doesn't, collect 3 power points after the heal and unlock the Elven Alliance and try to summon them whenever you see the potential to kill a whole battalion of the enemy Gondor Knights. Versus Mordor. Depending on the situation, you can try to rush the Elven Alliance special summon versus Mordor too. Elves can take easily care of the enemy mountain trolls as long as they have no drama troll leadership. When rushing the Mordor base with your Rohirrim, try to prioritize the troll cage. If you can take it down before your opponent can recruit any drama trolls, it will be pretty much GG. If Mordor recruits many Haradrims and soldiers of Rune and takes the control of the outpost, you can also rush the Anduri sword and recruit Aragorn. Aragorn is pretty much like a one-man army you can fight versus countless Haradrims and runes, destroy the outposts and kill trolls, but you should avoid fighting versus multiple trolls when they have drama troll around them. To complete the power point choices, here is which power points you should prioritize versus all factions. Versus Gondor and Rohan, Draft, Heal, Situationally Elvin Wood or Anduril, only if you recruit Aragorn, Elvin Wood and summon Army of the Dead. With the end summon from your spellbook, you can also siege the enemy castle to break in. Versus Isengard. Draft, Elven Alliance, Heal, Ends, Army of the Dead. You can summon the Ends on top of the enemy combos and trample them, regardless how much leadership they have. If they get trampled by the protectors of the Fangon Forest, they will all die. Versus Mordor. Draft, Elven Alliance, Heal, Anduril, Clawbreak, EOD. Here ends are not very useful, as by the time you unlock them, your opponent should have multiple trolls with leadership and potentially even a Nazgul or Witch King, and your ends won't achieve too much. In the patch 2.2, the Clawbreak is also able to stun trolls when they have no fear resistant, which can be very really good to stop the trolls from moving and take them down. Reaching the mid game, you can make the choice of rushing into mood or investing into the heroes like Eoma and Theorin. Eoma is extremely powerful versus Gondor, as the spear throw guarantees a kill on any knight it hits. Investing into heroes early will pay off later on, as Eoma leadership is crucial to deal later on with Gandalf. Rushing ends is highly recommended if your start was very successful and you can close the game within the first 10 minutes, but if it fails, your opponent will have a great chance of coming back. Versus Isengard, heroes like Legolas and Gimli can be extremely useful too, as Isengard will find a transition into the slow units like Uruk and Crossbowman combos, and you can snipe them from a long range with your Legolas and collect easily power points and experience. Just be careful about Lourdes, as when he cripples your Legolas, he will die. You need to try to win early versus Mordor, as Mordor is able to camp pretty nicely versus Rohan and without proper siege weapons, it will be hard to break through. In the mid game, you should start recruiting Rohirrim archers with fire arrows. Eowyn is highly recommended in this matchup.
matchup as her spear throw deals massive damage to trolls, Nazgûls, and even the Witch King. Use your mobility advantage and hit and run. Try to beat the Eye of Sauron in darkness and disengage until they fall off. Do not feed power points by losing your units to the Nazgûls and do this until you unlock the Army of the Dead to win the game. Now we came to the end of this video. I hope it was educational and helpful. If it was, please don't forget to leave a like to this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Let me know which faction we should cover in the next video in the comment section down below. Until then, take care of yourself, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.